All right. I think we're live. Here we go. I think we're live. Let's see if Twitter's live. I had to go live on Twitter today. Uh, and I'm going to do my share. So apologies for, um, you know, might get a little awkward for just a few minutes. Bear with me, please. Uh, boom. We are live on Rockfin. We're live on the Facebooks. And we're live on the Twitter sphere. So let me type out a quick little posty post. And we'll get we'll get going. All right. Uh, if you could, let me put up the little banner here. Oh, damn it. You can tell I haven't really done this, done the stream this way in quite some time. So, bear bear with me uh, as I get all of the things done here. Uh, cool. I had to do it this way today because it's kind of been a hectic and crazy day, um, and I didn't have it didn't have enough time to do uh, a little, you know, waiting room pre-show video. Uh, so, so pardon me there. I hope, I hope you don't hate me because I didn't do that. <laughs> I doubt you guys did. Uh, but, you know, it's, it, I, I'm, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this in the check-in, but it's that dumb part of your brain that, that always, uh, you know, says shit that, you're like, it's not even fucking, why would you say that? That's not even a thing that's. This switch over to the, and I mean, this is, this is like stuff you guys don't really see, especially if you've been paying attention to the more recent live streams, like Facebook has changed the way it does stuff. So I have to do like three different things in order to get everything posted properly on on Facebook. Uh, yeah, I would rather not have to do the social media stuff, but, you know, it's unfortunately a a part of uh, this this. Whatever you want to call it, this world, the sphere that I'm in, the entertainment bids the 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 infotainment biz you got to be on social media so you can get the word out to as many people as possible so uh but we're uh we're almost done actually uh because i'm just going to kind of do stuff really quickly and uh and and dive right into uh the content for today um i'm very excited because later i'm going to be talking to kevin gastola about daniel hale because he was there uh, he was at the hearing, and um, it would be good to get his perspective on it, considering he is a journalist that has covered this, uh, unlike other journalists on larger networks that refuse to fucking talk about Daniel Hale or Julian Assange or any of these other important people. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. We're over here. Cool. Uh I'll put up the live show thing too, and I'll talk about those in, in a moment, but those are some live shows coming up. Let's uh, get to this. Da, 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 da. There it is. Oh, I wish Facebook made things easier, but they don't. They make things a lot harder, claiming that they make it easier. Because they're a bunch of liars. Anyway. Uh, oh, boy. There we go. All right. Shared out to a few groups. Shared, you know, did the things that I need to do. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Uh, obviously, you can see I've got some live shows coming up. I know I mentioned this at the very end of uh, Ron's stream today. But August 14th, I'm going to be doing my uh, show the my first new hour that uh i haven't done a full hour in a long time 
but I wrote I'm I, I've wrote written a new one that I'm going to be premiering for the first time in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, August 14th at the Irma Freeman Center for Imagination. If you can't make that show and you're in the Pittsburgh area, August 1st, I'm opening for Off With Their Heads at uh, the Fun House at Mr. Small. So you get some opportunities to come check out a live show. Uh, and uh, let's see, what else? September 17th in Williamsport, Pennsylvania at the Art House Project. September 30th in Louisville, Kentucky at the Bardstown Lounge. August 6th in Lansing, Michigan at the Robin Theater. And August 8th at, at uh, in Detroit, Michigan at Trixie's Bar. Uh, Jesse Jett is going to be on that show, which is super fucking exciting. Uh, Jesse's going to join us uh, on that show. Uh, and uh, we're adding a bunch more dates right now. Uh, Columbus, Minneapolis, Chicago, uh, Des Moines, Kalamazoo, Cincinnati, Indianapolis. Uh, those are those are some of the dates that I'm uh, the cities that I'm looking to confirm dates in. So I should have those dates confirmed in the next couple weeks. And then more tickets will go up. If you want to grab tickets, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. Uh, yeah. Uh, I know. So I started talking about the whole like you know, negative aspect of, of, uh, of my, of my brain. And, uh, that happens a lot, especially in days like the last couple of days, which have been a little bit more stressful. And it, it's kind of just been back to back to, you know, it's like, I already completed this task. Let's move to this task. And I completed that task. Let's move to this task. So it's been a lot of that. Um, so I've needed uh, quite a bit of, uh, downtime in the evenings. You know, uh, yesterday I got to see an old friend, um, but I I haven't fully recharged from from just like the the constant forward momentum, and one of the things I always need to recharge is just time alone, uh, and that's not time alone. Like I'm I work uh, by myself in this room quite often, but that's that's not a recharge. That's me doing work, and I and I love what I do, and I really enjoy my work, which which is great, but. Uh, you know, I've been talking about this with with my therapist uh, a bit, but I want to kind of say this out loud so that there is like a reminder uh, for me a a anyway, is, um, you know, if I, I, I need to start being OK with enjoying these sorts of things, like I get guilty if I play an hour of, or two of video games that help me unwind and, and relax. Or if I watch, you know, I've been to watch a show in the evenings or whatever. Or I go hang out with uh, with a friend, uh, you know, I, I would feel guilty because in my, in my brain it's saying, well, you're not working hard enough. You're not doing things, uh, uh, you know, to the capacity that you should be doing them. Uh, other people are surpassing you. This is why you don't get opportunities, so on and so forth. And, you know, recognizing that that thought is coming from it's a very old thought, probably related to like uh, growing up you know, with my, with, with parent, you know, going back to my parents and stuff like that. And the, and the way that, you know, I, I would, because I grew up in, in this immigrant household. And I think there's also societal pressure of uh, immigrants doing really, really well. Like there's not a lot of margin for error as a minority in America. You, you, you're, you're kind of expected to be perfect. Um, and 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 that's just the, that's just sort of the way that society looks at immigrants. Right. So that's I know that's that my parents felt that external societal pressure and then they put that pressure on me. So I would get a lot of shit for hanging out with friends or doing recreational activities, because in my family, recreational activities were not really seen as anything productive. When in reality, that is very productive because time away from this helps me recharge. So when I come back to this, uh, I can give it 100 percent and do a really good show that I'm really proud of and really excited for. I mean, that was the reason why, you know, uh, uh, that there are certain days where I'm like, you know, I'm not going to do the stream today because I'm not I'm either, you know, stressed out dealing with this bank shit or I've had too much going on the last few days that I need to like take care of my surroundings. Um, and I think that the American workforce should be allowed to do that. I know I'm skipping ahead to probably some of the topics that I want to talk about today, but I think we should be allowed to do that. We, we, we really, really should be allowed to do that, right? You should be allowed to take a day to just sort out your stuff 
unwind and then come back and and then you're more productive and then you're more engaged in the workplace, right? That should be a part of uh, the American working life. But we're not, you know, even today, like I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk to Kevin. I'm excited for this stream today. I'm excited. You know, I was excited to do Ron's show this afternoon. Um, but I, after all of that is said and done, I still have, you know, dishes to do that I got to get done. And then I, once those are done, I'm clocking out. I'm donezo. I'm not fucking paying attention to anything because I need to unwind with that. And instead of feeling guilty about it, um, uh, I, I I have to get better at saying, no, I shouldn't feel guilty. There's no reason to feel guilty. You've worked really fucking hard. You've worked 12, 13 hours today. Uh, I'm going to have some fun and have some recreation. So, you know, I'm working on my own self-guilt uh, and feeling bad about being happy and feeling bad about enjoying life. Um, so anyway, uh that's that's sort of the direction that I'm going in in a lot of circumstances. So like, I you know, so if this channel kind of also moves in that direction where where some of the content is not just intense political stuff all the time, uh, that's okay. We we we, we you know let's let's take a little bit you know let's take 15 minutes of this, um, of this live stream and talk about something light and airy. Talk about some. You know, I I, I want to involve more nerd shit into this anyway because I like nerdy stuff, uh, and I can I, I obviously I I just do this auto automatically anyway is relate nerdy stuff to socio political topics because art mirrors life and life mirrors art and vice versa and all that sort of stuff. So I want to be able to talk about those things uh, on this channel. So that is that is sort of the direction that uh, things are headed in. Uh, Holly, good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, and, uh, yeah, all the folks watching on Twitter, all the folks watching on the Facebooks, uh, uh, you guys know the drill with these live streams. I encourage you guys to leave comments. I will look at comments at the end of each segment and, and, you know, uh, chat with you guys a little bit. Uh, I'm going to do my best to try to get to as many comments as I can, but obviously I don't want the segments to just keep running forever and ever. So, uh, let's, let's dive right into it. So here's a, here's a story, uh, that I, found on radindymedia.com go to radindymedia.com and uh and and get your news for the day from uh from from awesome independent sources and content creators uh so this is an it's going down story uh there's a mutual aid group a mutual aid hub called the gym in bushwick new york in new york city and they've basically been operating their uh activities on the sidewalk right they they were uh, this this real estate company uh, came in and pushed them out of their space. So their storefront, which they had a, a nice little storefront where they could you know conduct their business, which is basically uh, having people donate stuff uh, and uh, you know being able to say, hey, this person in this community needs help with X Y Z. Is anybody available? You know, food deliveries, things of that sort. Um, they got booted out, but the space was still like pretty much rented by them. It was, it was a weird situation, but they, but they basically were operating off of the sidewalk uh, and they finally reclaimed their space, right? Which had kind of been left in shambles. It hadn't been really taken care of because the landlords didn't really fucking care. They didn't really give too much of a shit. So um, yeah, you know, so, so they finally reclaimed it on, on July 21st. They reclaimed the storefront. And then on July 24th, uh, the NYPD shows up uh, on the behest of these real estate agents and they kick them the fuck out. And and when I mean kick them, kick them the fuck out, like literally physically kicking them, like the act of using one's foot to thrust force upon another thing or person. So so let's. Let's go to the big boards. Let's let's go let's go check out this Twitter video. Uh, this is somebody that was on the scene there. It's a short 14 second Twitter video. Check this out. Oh, this. Oh, yes, fucking oh, 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 So they tackle. Oh, so, so they tackle him to the ground. And then these folks come in and all they're trying to do is help this guy because 
what did he do? He just ran out of the store. That's not illegal. And that's also what they want, right? They want these people out of the storefront. And he did that thing. And then they were like, tackle him. And then check this out. I, I, I noticed this in the video too. There's one cop. So this guy, this cop that shows up right here, he shows up. And then when, he, when they start defending themselves, that guy puts his fists up at somebody. Look, he shoves him. And then, and then he's squaring off. Look, he's squaring off. That guy's squaring. These are cops, and they're squaring off against civilians. I almost knocked my fucking water glass over. That would have been a disaster. But look at him. He like, like he's gonna box with them. This is just an average person trying to make sure that you don't put your fucking knee on the back of somebody else's neck. Because guess what? Just because Derek Chauvin is in prison doesn't mean that cops like this don't fucking kill other other people because they do. And we've seen plenty of cases where, uh, you know, cops have brutalized and killed other people. But this guy's squaring off. And then I think he realizes what he does and he backs off. Right here. He, he's squaring off with this guy. And he and then this guy's just got a camera and he he flinches and he backs off. And then. Obviously, this guy said something to him, and then he just goes on to pushing and shoving them off. But here, I'll point this up again. This there's that cop squaring off with this dude, with a with with a fucking mutual aid worker, or someone that supports mutual aid. Whatever it is, you don't need to put your fucking fists up and try to knock them down. That's what that's what American policing is. This is why we talk about defunding the police. This is why we this is why we don't we don't want roid, roided out cops in our communities. Mutual aids have been helping people across the country nonstop. Even before the pandemic, they were they were they were growing. They were growing in popularity, they were growing in size. Um, and they provide ride shares, right? Uh, the Pittsburgh Mutual Aid will post up stuff about, hey, we need this person, to, you know, this person needs a ride to the pharmacy to get their medication, uh, and, you know, and, and some groceries. Does anybody, can anybody take them? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they're usually very good about saying like, hey, this person will wear a mask. You know, they, requ they request that you wear the, a mask as well, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, they're very, they, they take safety into, into uh, consideration. They provide food. Like I said, they do food deliveries. The Pittsburgh restaurant workers right now uh, just sent out an email claiming that, saying that they're looking for a food delivery person. And, it's, it's, and they're paying 21 bucks an hour. A mutual aid organization is paying somebody 21 bucks an hour. Does DoorDash do that? Does Grubhub pay you 21 bucks an hour? The answer is no, they don't do that. That's obviously you guys can't. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure some of you responded, but I, you know, because of the internet uh they also provide medicine like they help people get their medicine and stuff they help people uh with financial assistance just straight up financial assistance through donations and this real estate company right now in new york that is that is evicting the gym out of their space and keeping them out of their space and using cops to do so um is is preventing people in this community from receiving help that's what they're doing all for the sake of making profits. That's it. They don't fucking care, right? It's not like this real estate company is like, well, we're gonna build a, we're gonna build a, a, a cafeteria, and and a bunch of these corporations are gonna just donate a fuck ton of food every single day, and we're gonna feed the community, okay? And we need this space. No, they're not doing that. They probably want to turn it into some fucking boutique store that half the people that live in the community haven't heard of. Uh, can't really have that doesn't really have any use for and can't afford to shop in anyway that's what that's what these real estate companies are doing the fear of these mutual aids and a lot of socialist actions is uh is because they th these like mutual aid and socialism prove that we don't need capitalism to live or survive that's what it does the concept of mutual aid is completely outside 
the the paradigms of capital of acquiring capital of acquiring profits right it's that's not why people people take part in mutual aid it's not why people start mutual aid groups they start mutual aid groups because they want to fucking help people and if they make money great you know obviously some of these mutual aids are making enough money to and and it's you know to to pay people for their services which is great because now they now now they can uh, have a dedicated person to run food and do grocery shopping and buy meals for people or pack pack meals and deliver it to people that's something else mutual aids do they show that a capitalist government will not help you mutual aids have helped people far more than this capitalist government that we have how far did a $1,200 check go when in the city of New York, I bet that's your rent. In in Washington, D.C., that is one month of rent. That's it. That's all you got. You got maybe one month of rent in most cities. The rest of it, figure it out. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. That's what these politicians said with that $1,200. Bucks. But here are mutual aid groups that... You know, and, and people during the pandemic that worked for these mutual aid groups weren't getting paid. It was on a volunteer basis. And they grew to the point where some of them are now able to pay dedicated employees to, to do the job to make sure the communities are taken care of. Here's another one. Chicago, Fred Hampton Jr., uh, put out a fridge with free food along with a free library and a uh, a, a fresh, fresh vegetable garden in Oak Park, which is a food desert. Um, there is massive food inequality and food insecurity in this neighborhood. And Fred Hampton Jr., guess who he's related to, uh, is carrying forward the actual true legacy of the Black Panther Party and, you know, bringing back some of their survival programs. It's his fridge plugged into the into the into Fred Hampton's home, sits on the front yard and it's open 24 seven. You have anonymity. So, you, you know, you don't have to feel embarrassed that you need to come to this fridge to get, you know, maybe some groceries and then people replace it. I know for a fact that uh, the the DSA in Norfolk, Virginia, did that. My 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 friends uh, uh, made made that happen, and it's a wild success down there. The pantry goes empty, and then all of a sudden more food comes in, and then it goes empty again, and all of a sudden more food comes in. People help each other. That's mutual aid. Fred Hampton Jr. is doing the same thing that my friends in Norfolk did, part of the DSA. This is this is how things are supposed to fucking run. If you if you have a system that that champions poverty, then this this is how it it gets fixed. Not through corporate bailouts, not through bank bailouts, not through starting more wars. Not through talking about quarter one was, uh, you know, 10% uh, higher. Than, no one gives a fuck whether your quarter was better than the last one. They care about being able to feed their fucking family. But this is why billionaires are out of touch, right? Psychologically, they've never had to struggle or survive for this stuff, um, or they don't have to. You know, even if they did, it's like that that era is long gone. And that's probably part of their trauma, too. You know, some billionaires uh, that that didn't come out of trust funds. They're so afraid of going back to any level of poverty that they can't see. That even if you have. If you have 25 billion and and you reduce your wealth to 10 billion, you're still fucking richer than God. You know why? Because Jesus was a socialist and would never actually want to be a billionaire. He would probably give a lot of that wealth back to the community and keep a little for himself so that he can feed himself and house himself and clothe himself. 
So yeah, when people say billionaires are richer than God, it's because the 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 mythic figure of God would never want to fucking be a billionaire. Because being a billionaire would mean that you would have to be callous, cruel, step on people, and and give up your own humanity. Psychologically, that's I mean they've they've done studies. They're like they don't relate to people. They they they've kind of looked beyond their own humanity to something different, right? They're they're not technically Homo sapiens. They're Homo douchebagus. That's that's um that's science. Fred Hampton Jr. Karen Forward. DSA in Norfolk carrying forward the true legacy of the Black Panther Party. AOC's not doing that. Bernie Sanders ain't doing it. Rashida Tlaib, the squad, they're not doing it. Where where are they starting food food uh, free refrigerators with free food? Food pantries across the country. Are, is AOC going out to Bushwick, fucking telling the NYPD to back the fuck off and let these people operate their mutual aid out of the building that they're fucking paying rent in? Absolutely not. She couldn't even show up to the Medicare for All rally, which is something that she fucking championed. These politicians don't do anything until we fucking make them do it. Again, I'm getting a little ahead of myself because that's <laughs> that's the next segment. Mutual aids, man. Mutual aids are carrying forward uh, the 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 actual legacy of things like the Black Panther Party, Martin Luther King Jr., the the labor movement from the early 1900s. What's the core tenet of it? It's solidarity, not charity. It's an economy that is run on compassion, logic, and actual freedom. Under capitalism, money is a limiter. It's not a. It's it's it, 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 it's a limiter. It's not freedom. If you don't have money, you can't do certain things. Under socialism, that's not a problem. If you don't have money, if you hit some hard times, you're not going to lose your lose your home, right? Access to shelter, access to health care. You won't you won't lose that. Because the community around you will be like, hey, we got you. Don't worry about it. Guess what? Down the street, we have a place that's going to give you food. Guess what? The people around your neighborhood, we're going to rally together to help you cover rent. And actually, if we had a socialist system, if you, you know, under, under, under socialism, if you talk to a landlord and say, hey, I fell on some hard times. I've actually lost a significant amount of my income. I'm not sure what to do. They'd be like, don't worry about it. This is why you paid rent for all these years. Now now, now it's our turn to take care of you for a little bit. Don't worry about it. Because that's what an economy run on compassion looks like. An economy run on capital looks like people getting kicked out of their homes and winding up homeless. during. during let's not forget we're still in the middle of a pandemic. And homeless communities have a, a, a higher rate of spread. Because guess what? You think they're getting vaccinated? You think they have the they have the access to get vaccinated? I'm going to use a Republican term here. You think, or and really a Democratic term too. You think they have the access to get vaccinated? Can they can they go online and register to get vaccinated? You know how homeless people would get vaccinated when a doctor decides to just do it. And in Florida, there was a doctor that was doing it out, out of compassion, out of out of the fact that he didn't want to see homeless people suffer from this disease, so he was helping them with PPEs, helping them with uh, uh, taking care of themselves to make sure they don't fall sick. <laughs> and the Florida cops arrested that dude in front of his own house. That's what capitalism looks like. What's that meme? Uh, socialism is the uh, the fire department coming out to to put out your fire. Uh, capitalism is the insurance company denying your claim. Yeah, that's this is it. This is why we need more mutual aid. This is why people should be supporting mutual aid. This is why if you if you're worth a damn, you would tell the NYPD to go fuck themselves. This is why we should be championing to defund the goddamn police so they stop brutalizing and bullying people that are trying to help a community in need. Why? So you can get a fucking pottery bond or anthropology in bushwick who asked for that fucking nobody
let's look at your comments. <laughs> After I just yelled. Um, Aiden, Aiden's one of the people that uh, put up the, uh, the, is it, is it a food pantry? Am I, is that the accurate term for it uh, in Norfolk there? Uh, there's two of them now, which is awesome. There you go. There you go. It's expanding. It's growing. That's how successful these are. They're growing. Uh, this is getting more lumber to build more. Look at that. And guess what Aiden's not doing? He's not trying to franchise it like it's a goddamn Starbucks. <laughs> Free food pantries. Boom. That's how mutual aid works, people. Right on. Thank you for tuning in, you guys. Over on the Rockfin. Uh, Holly says there is life outside work. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, oh, Holly brought up uh, like food, not bombs and, uh, and the homeless encampments. Yes. Yes. Food, not bombs. Uh, I'm, I finally, uh, <laughs> Steve Poinkinen has been telling me he's going to get me Keith and McHenry's, uh, contact information for a while since I did the homeless show, <laughs> uh, the homelessness show that I did way back, uh, in February. We've been talking about getting this. Uh, his contact information. So I finally got Keith McHenry's um, contact information. So I, I'm I'm gonna try to get him on the podcast. But uh, uh, Keith has been arrested for feeding people. And one of the one of the things they said is, well, feeding people is unsanitary because after people eat, they poop. It's like, oh man, finally, finally, the government has come out and confirmed uh, everybody poops. You guys. We're all just a bunch of poopers, and that's why you shouldn't eat. And that is uh, a statement from the United States government. <laughs> Don't eat. It'll cause poop. Stop eating, you guys. That's all That's all America's trying to do right now. Is there's so much poop in the world that we, America has to create poverty and homelessness to prevent the pooping. We're just, uh, we're just going to be covered in our own shit. <laughs> Uh-oh, what happened? Did I lose it? Okay, am I back? I'm back. Looks like I'm back. Um, Sorry, it, it, it the Rockfin screen blanked out for a second. I was like, fuck, no. Uh, Holly says, uh, brutal, protect and serve. Uh, mutual aid is more effective and real. And and they're, I, I mean, the results are right in front of us. They're right in front of us. Healthcare and housing are rights. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. A and again, mutual aid sees that. Mutual aid sees that for what it is. Uh, and, and that's what they do. They try to help people to ensure that they have food, shelter, uh, water, health, if we can figure out a way to get uh, internet for people through mutual aid, that would be fucking awesome. That that is unfortunately because of the infrastructure of the way thing, that would be a little bit difficult to do. You'd have you'd, you'd probably have to push the the city to do it. But that but that also you could you could have big municipal broadband rallies so that more cities get municipal broadband. All right, I jumped ahead. This is I. This is also another kind of important thing to talk about. I've, I've wanted to talk about this for a little while, um, and I started seeing a lot more stories about it because uh, I think it passed in the House, uh, narrowly passed in the House, I should say. The PRO Act, the uh, Protect the Right to Organize Act, uh, which, God damn it, is, isn't it fucking sad that we have to, like, we have to come up with legislation to, to protect our fucking right to organize as workers in this country. How fucking sad is it? Again, that's a consequence of capitalism, not a consequence of socialism. Where, where you have to go, no, we have the right to come together as the working class and say that we are being fucked by the oligarchs and we would like that to stop. Now, the PRO Act isn't something new. We have seen this before. The PRO Act is, uh, for all intents and purposes, a lot of it is very similar to the Wagner Act of 1935. The Wagner Act of 1935 
uh, basically legitimized unions and gave collective bargaining powers to um, to the working class. Uh, it also gave them the right to organize within their workplace. Uh, so, you know, workers were treated a lot better even during the Depression than they are now. Uh, because for about a decade, for from from uh, about 1935 to about 1946, 47, um, the Wagner Act was very, very beneficial to the working class. It was it was a major, major victory. How did we achieve this victory? Uh, 1934 was the year of general strikes. Uh, before that, you had several other general strikes that happened across the country. Right. You had the Seattle General Strike of 1919. You had the, the Winnipeg General Strike of 1919. You had, uh, uh, you know, uh, coal miners striking against coal towns in the 20s. Um, you had a ton of it. And then in 34, was, there was like a huge spike. Uh, textile workers, there were uh, taxi drivers, truck drivers, uh, the Toledo auto workers went on strike as well. Um, who else went on strike? And, and a lot of them got violent, by the way, and not because of the strikers. They got violent because the state or the uh, or or the president himself, Franklin Delano Roosevelt himself, would send the National Guard to some of these places and 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 basically say, "Yeah, you can fucking open fire on these people," and that's cool with me. So that's what they would do. So then the strikers would fight back. Uh, a couple of them died. A couple of them were unarmed, uh, and 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 they were shot at anyway. I mean, this is how America responds. When working class people go, hey, we deserve human rights. Hey, we would like to be treated as people now. And they're like, kill the buy shirts. So when when that force failed, right, because it failed, because it did, it failed, it fucking failed. Uh, the, you know, these these radical socialists and communists who, you know, whatever differences there were between socialist, communist, the IWW, they dropped those differences and they were like, yeah, we can all agree that we're all being fucked by these assholes, right? Great. Let's all organize together, form a general strike, march on the streets. Uh, and by the way, if they fire back at us, guess what? Uh, Chucky over here has got a whole fucking truckload of guns. We're going to fight back. We're going to defend ourselves. We're, gonna, we're not going to open with Chucky's guns. That's crazy. We're not going to. Chucky, put the guns away, please. We talked about this. You can't just you can't just keep bringing your guns out at the meeting, buddy. OK, put the guns away. And then if they fire on us, Chucky, you bring out the arsenal. All right. And we will go guerrilla warfare on these motherfuckers. And that's what they did. <laughs> and, and, then, and, and then you had. Uh, oh, man, I can't remember the position in the cabinet, but you had a high ranking person from FDR's cabinet. Right. Which you would assume is all pro labor and rah, rah, rah. <laughs> he comes out and he goes, these labor strikes are un-American. You guys need to get back to work. <laughs> Again, what we learn about FDR in school is that he was the working class champion. And the reason why working class people have all of these rights is because FDR was the one who championed them. No, he didn't. He just realized that that if he continues to keep sending the National Guard into the streets to fight working class Americans who have also taken arms to defend themselves, he's going to start another fucking civil war. So what does he have to do? And I and I do think that at a certain point, you know, I might be wrong, but from, from what I've read, my interpretation would be that they I think I think he did get influenced by this. To change his perspective. Uh, FDR was a banker's kid. His uncle was connected to, I want to say, JP Morgan. I'm, I might be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But he was his uncle was connected to a large bank. I mean, he was a rich trust fund kid. And he became the president. Go, go, fig go figure another fucking rich guy became pre president of the United States. And so... You know, FDR signed the Wagner Act. And here we are again, where now Joe Biden has the opportunity to 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 do this. Right. And he and he has said that he's he's backing this. Um, it narrowly passed in the House. I guess it's it's on the Senate. And uh, one uh, Bernard Sanders uh, has said that he's going to put use portions of uh, of this bill for the Democrats Senate budget uh, bill. Uh, and part of the, the way that he's going to do it is because it's a budget bill, it can't include like 
you know, it can't include like legitimizing unions and increasing collective bargaining for work for workers. Um, so it can't do that because it's a budget bill. So it has to be budget related. So the way he's going to try to do it is by saying, well, if these uh, corporations aren't going to follow, you know, national labor laws, which they don't, um, they've circumvented a lot of shit. Even, even, even the fact that like, you know, oh, if you have a full time employee, then you have to, you know, provide them health care and benefits and so on and so forth. And they go, yeah, OK, well, none of our fucking people are full time employees. They are either part time or independent contractors. So, you know, and, and they're allowed to do that. Now we have to we, we have to learn from those lessons and go, yeah, no, part time employees and independent contractors also deserve health care. And if they're going to do a job for you, then, yeah, you should also. Provide them with those benefits. Holy shit, what a concept. So I'm 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 all for this sort of a penalty to be included in the bill. Um, and look, you guys, you guys know me. I'm I'm not a I'm not a big electoral politics guy, uh, but this has promise, and uh, I'm, I'll get into how I think we can get this achieved. Right? How how this can we we can get Wagner Act Part Two with the Pro Act, uh, and part of that comes from the penalties. If you are really going to penalize these corporations, it can't be a slap on the wrist. You know, we you have companies that up up in the north in the northeast, they're like waste recycling or not waste waste management companies, and they dump fucking uh, waste into a landfill that leaches into the water supply and poisons to people living in those towns. And they're like, oh, million dollar fine. You really think a million dollars is fucking anything to this corporation? No, no, no. Put a percentage on it. 25% or above, if you're not going to fucking follow labor laws, if you're going to Jeff Bezos this thing, if you're going to make your employees piss in fucking bottles because, oh, my God, bathroom breaks are, are, are a killer for my productivity. I can't go take a tour around the planet in a dick-shaped rocket if people take pee breaks. I need to get to the moon so I can build another warehouse there. I need to get to a moon so that I can use my dick rocket to try to fuck the moon because that's where my head is at. If you're going to be that fucking guy, 25% or more for every fucking labor law that you break. And then if it gets to 100%, then we dip into your personal wealth and we'll find your Cayman Islands, motherfucker. We're coming for your fucking money if you're not going to treat us like human beings. I need to take a breath. <laughs> I gotta show this guy. I don't know. I gotta show this comment because it's hilarious. Yeah, fuck the moon. Right at the dark side. <laughs> oh, that's a fantastic comment. But it, look, if you're gonna fuck the moon in its dark side. 25% or more. That's the, that's the penalty right there. You can't fuck celestial objects without penalties. Get your dick rocket out of here, you son of a bitch. Okay, so what so again, so let's go over what the <laughs> I got sidetracked by this. Uh it's just so ridiculous that he just spun around the planet and he was like, hey. My employees and my customers helped me pay for this unnecessary joyride, huh? America, capitalism, thanks for making my dream of being a spaceman happen. Fuck off. Uh, okay, what does the PRO Act actually say? Uh, we should get to that, right? Well, what does the PRO Act actually say? So uh, the PRO Act, again, legitimizes unions. It strengthens unions. It also, uh, because now you don't need to vote, right? That's what the Taft-Hartley Act did. The Taft-Hartley Act said that employees have to vote, have to vote whether they want a, uh, a union to come in uh, and, and help organize the workers, right? There has to, and, and it has to be a majority of, of the people. Um, and in the meantime, the unions can't come onto the work site and actually uh, talk about why it would be beneficial to be in a union on the work site, right? So they have to figure out a different way to do it. And corporations can show anti-union propaganda all the live long day, which they do. They, they, that, that is a fucking fact that corporations uh, nonstop use anti-union propaganda to prevent organizing. Amazon does it. Walmart does it. Hobby Lobby does I mean, these corporations, they all fucking do it nonstop so they're allowed to do that but the so it's 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 tilted 
It's a tilted law um, that undoes that. Now unions can come on and, and say, hey, this is why you should join a union. We're going to fight you regardless of whether you join or not. But this is the benefits you get uh, from from labor organizing and collective bargaining. Uh, and it gives the workers a right to collectively bargain, right, it, it, which gives them the right to organize with a union. Uh, it ends right to work laws, which, as the name suggests, is all you have the right to do. That's it. So they can pay you dick all wages and say, hey, at least you're working and that's your right. And that's all you get to do. You don't get to ask for a raise. You don't get to move up with them. You're not guaranteed for any of this shit. You just have to be happy. So it gets rid of that, which is great because right to uh, right to work laws are 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 like just on the cusp of basically saying, hey, we're going to make you slaves and that's all you'll ever be. So stop bitching. At least you're doing something right. Like that's we're it's teetering on that line. Now, for rideshare uh, and gig economy workers, this act, th the pro act would would help these guys out a whole lot. Um, you know, it gives them a an opportunity to get organized, which I know they have uh, They're They're well. Technically, they're not unions. I think they're just like labor groups uh, because because uh, gig economy companies like DoorDash, Lyft, Instacart, Uber, they don't look at these people as employees. They look at them as independent contractors. And we're we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a minute here. But uh, it it if they can organize under the PRO Act, they'll be able to organize and, and form a union. Um they can ask for better pay, better treatment, and safety measures, because because these guys don't have safety measures. I mean, there, how many videos did we see over the last year of Lyft drivers, uh, or I'm sorry, Lyft drivers getting attacked by their passengers for just saying, "Hey, please wear a mask in my car." Like, fuck, off, can is that that's all you need to do? Can you be respectful of this one individual's fucking health? You the, you are in their personal vehicle, which they have to use, by the way, right? The, like they have to use their own fucking vehicle. Lyft should be paying you more because you're using your own fucking vehicle to do that job, and then you're getting assaulted in your own fucking vehicle. Now, this this the Pro Act would also counter Prop Twenty Two in California, which is. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what Prop 22 is, it's basically um, uh, a, 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 a proposition that got passed because uh, Lyft, Uber, you know, DoorDash, all these tech companies, all these, you know, gig economy companies spent millions of dollars buying off politicians to say, hey, we can call uh, these these plebs independent contractors and basically treat them like dog shit and nobody can say anything about it. That passed because there was money involved, like millions of dollars that they threw into getting this thing passed. The PRO Act would undo it. Um, Prop 22 also prevented them from organizing, uh, choosing their rides. Uh, so so now they can't say they, they can't decline too many rides like. If you decline a job, and I know this from working from Lyft, and I have a bunch of other people that work for a few other, I have friends that work for a few other of these companies as well. Um, if you decline certain things multiple times, you get penalized. I remember I declined a ride because I would have to drive 25 minutes to go pick this person up for, for a 10 minute drive or something like that. And they don't pay you to get from from where you're at to the destination to pick somebody up. So I would have to drive 25 minutes. I'm not getting paid for it. Um, you know, so I, I think you should get paid for it. That should be part of your mileage, right? But they don't. Instacart did the same thing to me, right? I would decline things that are too far away. And, and then they penalize you, right? And one of the things that I remember Instacart doing is they would say, oh, well, you can't take anything for X amount of time. So now you're fucked. And you're like, well, I can take something that's closer to me. I just don't want to drive 20 miles to do it. So choosing their rides is important. And under Prop 22 in California, they can't fucking do that. So if somebody is 25 minutes away, well, guess what? You got to do it. Take the fucking ride. That's how they operate now. So Prop 22 did that. 
Uh, it also prevents them from getting health care. So Lyft, Lyft used to offer health care. I don't think they offer it anymore. Um, but even then, it was like not very affordable. Uh, or the ones that were affordable, like I, I found one for 45 bucks a month, covered nothing. So it was just me paying $45 a month for me to be like, hey, would you like to give me a hospital bill? And I'll give you $45. <laughs> Fourth, for you to print out the, the, that piece of paper. <laughs> That's basically what that was. Now, here's the problem, too, with, with these guys being independent contractors. A lot of people like um, uh, labor professors and labor scholars and stuff have looked at these gig economies and said, well, they're not independent contractors because you have a set salary for them. Right. It, it's we don't get to go in and try to negotiate to be like, I know you're saying it's a dollar thirty two. Um, it's it's a dollar thirty two per mile, but I would like two fifty a mile. They don't get to do that. They're not negotiating their rates or their prices. Oh, I know it says it's a five dollar minimum. I would like a six dollar minimum and then maybe I'll say one eighty five per mile. Also, I would like they don't get to do that sort of stuff. The, the uh, These corporations are telling you what you get per mile and what your minimum is and what you're getting out of that minimum. And independent contractors have to operate outside the scope of your regular business. Well, their regular business is being a rideshare company. Their regular business is being a food delivery company or a grocery delivery company or what have you. And these people are doing your regular business, so why are they not considered employees? Because, again, Taft-Hartley from 1947, 1946, 1947, allows them to do this. It allows them to circumvent um, na national labor laws. Independent contractors don't have to get health care. They don't have to be paid, probably. They don't even have to be treated human. The PRO Act, again, removes that those anti-union meetings. It ensures that a contract is reached instead of a corporation denying negotiations, because they'll do that. They'll say, yeah, we don't. We don't want to negotiate with you about this. Right? There's em uh, em employment transparency and corporate transparency, meaning they have to be open and upfront about a lot of their stuff. They can't hide shit, right? Corporate transparency is huge because that's how they hide money in tax havens and tax shelters. That's what, I mean, Delaware is a huge one. Delaware is a huge tax shelter. Oh, and this is a big one, too. It, it eliminates permanently replacing striking workers, right? Scabs, right? That's what they're called. They're called scabs. Uh, they would just hire scabs, and, they, and then they would say, oh, you're picketing, you're striking. Uh, well, you're fired. This prevents that. This prevents that. Because then when they fire the employee, they can say, well, this person doesn't work here anymore, so I don't know what they're actually striking this company for. They have no connection to it. It's it's It's... It's a nice way to fuck over the working class again. So what do capitalists have to say about this, right? Obviously, capitalists are against this. I am I am genuinely surprised that Joe Biden is for this, uh, to be honest. I'm very genuinely surprised that Joe Biden is for this. And uh, and I, I hope that he understands the same thing that uh, FDR understood and LBJ understood is uh, if you if you try to keep fucking us over, we'll keep taking to the streets. I don't know how he hasn't understood it in the context of defunding the police and, and the Black Lives Matter protests. Uh, but, hey, Crime Bill Joe, right? That's his fucking opus. His opus is creating the prison industrial complex uh, and a mass incarceration program that is specifically targeted people of color in poor neighborhoods. Demonizing a, a plant that is a medicine. So go figure that guy champions cops and doesn't want a plant that is also a medicine to be legally used as a medicine. Uh, but this, I am genuinely shocked. I, I'm, I'm, well, I shouldn't be because of his connection with the AFL, and the AFL is pro, uh, is does want the PRO Act to be passed as well because it would strengthen them a whole lot more. Um, the AFL, I have mixed feelings with. I Again, it kind of goes into the same way I look at like the National DSA and the National Green Party. I'm not a huge fan of them on a national front, but I have seen you know local chapters do really great things. Uh, this is the history of the AFL is not great. They only wanted white male tradesmen to be a part of their organization. Obviously, that's not the case anymore. 
Um, but there are, I mean, there are larger unions that are behind this. Again, it gives them more power, right? It, it does, it, it, at that point, I think on a local level, it allows them the opportunity to reorganize it themselves. So if, you know, I'm in Pittsburgh, if there's a Pittsburgh chapter of the AFL and they want to negotiate with something like somebody like UPMC, instead of going in and being like, what are the terms? Hey, the employees want X, Y, Z. They go, yeah, no, here's what we're offering. And either you can take it or leave. And and then unions have to go, well, I guess we'll take it because, you know, what, leaving it's just going to mean that we get nothing. Look at what happened to Frito-Lay, right? Those people basically said, well, they have to work weekends, but they but the corporation can still make them work uh, six, 12 hours, uh, 12 hour shifts in a row. But that's not a win for them. That's literally what they were fighting against, that they were working like 12, 12 to 16 hour shifts nonstop, seven days a week, getting no breaks. That's not a win. The, again, under the PRO Act, Frito-Lay would have been penalized fucking heavily because they're violating labor laws. You can't make people do that. But capitalists, so so here's some of the things that capitalists are saying, right? There was some CEO of, of the National American uh, Manufacturers uh, who was very gleeful and chummy with the Yahoo Finance people. Uh, and, you know, he, the, the capitalists think that the PRO Act is death. They think it's the worst thing that's ever come out. Uh, they claim that they already have a strong relationship with the workers, and this is going to get in the way. Wh where? Where do you have a strong? Because I bet you, you don't know the names of one, of, of even fucking one employee that works on, on the manufacturing floor. So you don't have a strong relationship with them. If you did, they wouldn't be picketing your fucking company now, would they? If you did, when they said, hey, we would like to be paid and treated better and perhaps get health care, you would have listened to them. And boy, if this is how you treat people that you, quote, have a strong relationship with, fuck, you sound like an abusive dick. Because I bet you have a strong relationship with your family and your wife and your kids as well. And if if they're saying you're doing something shitty and you go, nah, but we have a strong relationship, like you are an abusive prick. What else did this guy say? Uh, oh, and then he goes, th yeah, this is this is hilarious. He goes, it gets rid of, quote, settled worker right laws. Like what? Taft Hartley? Because people have been fighting Taft-Hartley since the day it was fucking written because it's an insane pro-corporate anti-worker bill. And you can claim it was settled, but that's because you just ignore anybody that says that it is a garbage fire bill. Which it is. It's a dumpster fire of a bill. It should have never been written in the first place. And boy, oh boy, Harry Truman... You, you, one of the reasons why Dwight D. Eisenhower didn't run with the Democratic Party and went uh, and ran as a fucking Republican was because of the Taft-Hartley Act. <clears throat> then he claims anonymity, right? Oh, the workers don't won't have anonymity if they're if they're you know unionized and they're organizing and all this other shit. Yeah, because their anonymity is really what they're con uh, concerned about, not being able to feed their family. Oh no, people might know my name. F what? Oh, honey, I'm, I know we haven't eaten food in three days because I haven't been able to afford it, but if I organize, people might know me. That's also another fucking insane reasoning. And then they claim unions have been successful. Where? Yeah, the ones that line up with the corporations do. They do become successful. Uh, the the union that Amazon workers were trying to unionize under have a record of that. They have a record of siding with the corporation, um, you know, a majority of the time. So if you're claiming that's successful, well, no, that's not successful. That's the union either on the side of the corporation, which doesn't really make them a union, because the point of being a, 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 a union is to be a voice for the working class people. So your premise is faulty all in all. And if unions were actually successful, then people would have better benefits.
benefits. They would have health care. They would have a living wage. They would be able to take vacations. We wouldn't have so many people go becoming homeless all of a sudden. I talked this on. I talked about this on Placone's uh, uh, Ron, Ron Placone's live stream today. We talked about how uh, when when a company actually treats its employees nicely, they become more profitable. This guy is saying the opposite. Is the other myth that they uh, they come out? They said the Pro Act will make you join unions. You'll have to join unions. False. It won't. The Wagner Act didn't force unions on people. People wanted to join a union. People wanted collective bargaining. People wanted to be fucking heard in the workplace. And regardless of whether you join a union or not, they're still going to fight for you and your rights as a worker, as an employee. So why would you not join one anyway? I'm not saying that you should. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. It just logically makes sense that you would. They're going to fight for you anyway. Everything capitalists talk about when they when they um, uh, talk about the pro, you know the the oh the, this is terrible when they whenever they shit on the pro act they only talk about pro, uh, profits right that the guy from Nam the CEO of Nam uh, whose name I can't remember and I don't give a shit about uh, talks about positive momentum for for uh, you know for the markets and increased wealth well what about positive momentum in the livelihoods of your workers, the health and welfare, the health and well-being of your workers. Any positive momentum that we can take in that? No, because it all boils down to the, the bottom line and the extraordinary amount of wealth that you can make that you're not going to share with your workers. If you did, we wouldn't be having this conversation now, would we? I mean, they're literally making up excuses. That's that's basically what they're doing, right? They're 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 ma they're they're making up excuses to sit there and say, "Oh, socialism will kill America." Will it? If that was the case, then the military uh, would be done, because that's one of the biggest socialist secrets in America. You want to know how you how you succeed by being in the military? By continuing to be in it, by being a career officer. Career officers get great health care. They get their education covered. Their families are covered. And they have a, a fantastic fucking salary. So guess who doesn't have to worry about any sort of PTSD or physical ailments from, from being deployed overseas to fight rich people's wars? Anybody that makes the military their fucking career. Anybody that came out of the military, they could give a good goddamn about you. The military is America's biggest socialist secret, but socialism doesn't work. Well, if that's the case, then the military should be failing. It should be collapsing under its own weight. But, hey, the budget keeps going up every year, doesn't it? <laughs> How's that? To, what? They don't have any, any legitimate uh, counterpoints to this. Let's look at some comments. Jesse, hello. Uh, Jesse's in a fantastic band called the Lori Creek. You guys should go check out Lori Creek because they're awesome. Uh, they put out a full full length album last year. It is phenomenal. You should go uh, check this check this out. Uh, so I review a lot of uh, tax returns. Uber and Lyft drivers typically have losses because of unreimbursed mileage and tolls. My mom said the same thing. My mom actually uh, so. Uh, when my mom was doing like tax work and stuff, she she told me to be very careful when I wanted to do like DoorDash and stuff to supplement some income. And she said the exact same thing. She's like, you're going to you you might wind up losing money. So be careful about how you do this thing. <laughs> right. Beautiful bit of fuckery right there. Yes, I agree. I agree. Uh, they're still hanging uh, this largely on scheduling. If there's not a, a set schedule, it's not an employee. Uh, anytime your income is determined by the schedule you set and the jobs you accept, uh, you're a contractor. It just happens in sales a lot too. Wow, I did not know that. Okay, so that's the that's the technicality. That's really interesting. So because because you don't have a set schedule, you you're not a salaried employee. That's fucking crazy. 
that is very good to know. That is that is an that is a good argument to 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 know that the is it, it, coming at you, isn't it? That's the yeah. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> Jesse says, if you give the rest of the country health care college, no one will join the mil- no one will join the military. <laughs> you can't take the government's recruiting tools, Chris. <laughs> Uh, Jesse, you're describing the poverty draft. That's that's what Jesse's describing. It's called the it's it's the poverty draft, right? A lot of people call that. It, it, there is no draft, but they will economically fuck you so that you have to join the military. Tons of people. I know tons of people that have talked to me about this, where they're like, "Yep, wanted to get out of my podunk town, needed a way out, couldn't afford it, joined the military. Couldn't afford college, join the military. Too much debt from college, join the military. Got medical bills, join the military. That's called a poverty draft. <laughs> Holly, Holly over on Rockfin. Holly says, repeal Taft Hartley. I, I agree, 100%. Uh, oh, look what happened in the Haymarket. Yeah, so uh, Haymarket is the reason why we have uh, May Day. Uh, it's because of the Haymarket affair. Uh, there, you know, and that was again that was a huge labor movement that was disrupted by the Pinkertons, who were essentially mercenaries for corporations, uh, who are still around today, by the way. Um, Holly's pointing out some stuff that socialists have done. Weekends off, no child labor, right? Yes, those are things that uh, uh, socialists have done. And again, in our education system, we are taught that it's kind of capitalists that help us do this sort of stuff, uh, which is untrue. Slap on the wrist, make the penalties count. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Work till you die, but there's a labor shortage. (laughs) Yeah. It's interesting, right? The right to work people, they're like, but you can work. Isn't that what you want? Why don't you want to work? And it's like, no, wait, yes, we want to work. But as Holly pointed out uh, in the previous segment is there's more to life than just working, right? I love doing this sort of stuff, but I know there's more out there to do as well. There's there's a whole world out there to explore, which by having that informs this, informs how I work, right? Informs the, the type of content I put out, informs the quality and the quantity of the work that I put out. So it's not a labor shortage. It's a wage shortage. And again, things like the PRO Act would fix that. Now, again, I don't have uh, I, I did not get to this part, part of uh, of uh, of my ranty rants. And I and and let me say this as, as we wind things down is here's how we can make this work. Right. If you want this, but look, this marginally passed in the House. Uh, and that's a goddamn travesty. This should have passed. No fucking problem. Democrats hold the house and the Democrats claim to be the party of the goddamn working class. And if they're the party of the goddamn working class, that means that you would pass this bill. Absolutely no problem. But what are they going to do? They're going to blame people like fucking Joe Manchin, who's not a de- who, who's basically a, a Republican in Democrats clothing, which means that he's a Republican. Uh, so. They're going to blame it on them, but there there should have been no reason why this is this didn't pass with flying colors through the house. Now it goes to the Senate, which the Democrats are in control, too. So, you know, if we're talking about strategy, then this should pass in the Senate. But right now, a lot of speculation is, oh, it looks like it's going to get locked up in the Senate. Here's what we need to do. Take to the streets. Start organizing strikes. Start amplifying strikes. If you know of a strike in your area, go support them. Use that mutual aid we talked about earlier. Right. The the uh, if the fridge, the Norfolk uh, free food pantry, mutual aid groups around the uh, country, like the gym, like the Pittsburgh restaurant workers, mutual aid, support those because they're the ones that are going to be able to deliver food to them. This has happened all throughout history. Whenever there's a labor strike, people start organizing around it. And then, you know, there's there's solidarity that forms around it. And then you can build solidarity strikes. That leads to general strikes, those general strikes just like 1934, are fucking terrifying to the oligarchs. It's fucking scary. They don't know what to do with them. Everybody stopped working? Yeah, everybody stopped working. 
And the only person that isn't benefiting from this are the bosses. You know why? Because all the people participating in the strike are still using mutual aid to take care of each other. That's what's happened in every single fucking general strike. 1934 in Toledo, when, when the auto workers went on strike, uh, the company tried to hire scabs, but they couldn't find any scabs. Want to know why? Because the radical socialists that were in control of the union that organized the strike were feeding unemployed workers. They fed them. They took care of them. And they go, join our cause. And when you do get work, it, it will be, you know, food will be plentiful for you. That's what we need to do. That's how we fucking win. Because we've done it. And we've won before. And it's time to do it again. And this time, we have lessons from the past to hold on to that victory. To hold on to winning. Anyway, uh, that... That brings us uh, to the conclusion of this program. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out and uh, checking out the show. If you enjoyed this, please make sure that you share this out to as many people as you can. Uh, share this with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would benefit from it. Independent media survives because people like you share. Uh, it doesn't cost you any kind of money. It just it's it's a click of a button. That's all it is. Uh, and please make sure that you're subscribed to this, especially if you're watching this on YouTube and Facebook. Please make sure you're subscribed to this. I would recommend that you guys uh, that are possibly watching this on YouTube or Facebook transfer over to Rockfin, rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, you no longer need to make an account with Rockfin in order to watch any of their content, which is huge, which is awesome. And I think that's going to drive more people onto that platform. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and they fight censorship. Um, they, they, they don't censor you for any of the content. So the content's really about what you want to watch. Um, so if there's somebody that you're like, hey, you do too much uh, of this kind of reporting and I'm not a big fan of it, so I'm not going to watch you anymore. Boom. Great. You're it's not that's not going to show up in your algorithm. So go to Rockfin. Uh, you don't have to make an account, but I would recommend that you do. If you are on stable financial ground and would like to become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation, head over to my website, krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That is K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com slash donate. Sustaining members get free tickets to both live and virtual shows. Uh, so now that live shows are coming back, if I'm coming through your city, which I'm adding a bunch of cities as we speak, I'm, I'm waiting to hear confirmation from a few places, uh, uh, including places like Norfolk, Virginia, you guys, uh, I, uh, you guys would get free tickets to come check out that show. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com slash donate. Uh, you can also join my email list to get uh, updates about live shows, virtual shows, podcasts, videos that I've put out. Uh, and sometimes I write fun essays. One of the things I, I want to start doing, and I think I'm going to just pull the trigger and, and do this, is I want to start doing some reviews, uh, some nerdy reviews that I want to write and talk about some stuff. Uh, so I in, in the next week or two, I'm going to be writing out a full review of uh, Masters of the Universe Revelation which is something that I, I did a short review of yesterday, but I want to kind of go into some detail and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I want to, you know, do like music reviews, song reviews, album reviews, stuff like that. And, and the email list would be the first place that it would go. And then it would wind up on my website. So if you want to sign up for that, that's krishmohanhaha.substack.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.substack.com. And lastly, live shows are back. They are back. It's very exciting. Uh, August 14th, I'm going to be, uh, that's the first time I'm going to be doing my full hour in front of a live audience uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Irma Freeman Center for Imagination. September 17th, I'm at the Art House Projects in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. September 30th, I'm at the Bardstown Lounge in Louisville, Kentucky. August 6th, I'm at the Robin Theater in Lansing, Michigan. And August 8th, I'm in Trixie's Bar in Detroit, Michigan, technically Hamtramck, but it's in the Detroit sphere. Uh, so I'm going to say Detroit, Michigan. Uh, but there's a ton more shows that, that I'm adding. So you should go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Get your tickets. Come hang out with me. Uh, my next virtual show is on Friday, and I'm doing a dry run of, of my hour 
uh, and and then we'll chat about it a little bit more to see what worked, what didn't. Am I presenting this in in a a good way that makes you know sense to people, so on and so forth. So uh, grab your tickets for that. But with all that said. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for leaving comments. Aiden, Melanie. Ugh, I, lo I, I like ran out of breath in the middle of saying people's names. <laughs> Aiden, Melanie, Jesse, over on the Rockfin, we had Fred, Holly. Thank you guys for leaving comments and hanging out. You guys are wonderful. Uh, we'll be back next week with the, with more live streams. Uh, I'm going to be dropping Kevin Gastola's interview uh, this week. I've got a dispatch coming out this week. Uh, tons of really awesome stuff. So, uh, very excited about that. And uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.